What's up, YouTube? This is 2Raw4TV. Alright, so before I get into this video, I want to give a big shout out to the brother Franchise Sports TV with a donation to the channel via the Cash App. He says, keep cooking the Lestands. Absolutely. I want you guys to subscribe to uh, Franchise Sports TV. He um, has a YouTube channel, of course. And... Uh, put a link to his YouTube channel in my community post. He also has a Rumble. Uh, I believe he also has a Patreon, too. Yeah, he has a Patreon as well. So please subscribe to that, brother. Uh, very knowledgeable. And like me, he tells you the truth about, you know, that not-so-young kid from Akron, you know, at least from our perspective. So salute to him. I want to talk about the Milwaukee Bucks, right? So... One of the things that pissed me off about when Adrian Griffin got fired is I thought that with a 30-13 and 13 record at the time of his termination, I thought that he deserved enough uh, respect. I thought that he did enough for him to at least finish out his first year. Now, I understand now that, you know, when he was hired, there was an expectation that the team would be far different. Uh, there was an expectation that uh, Chris Milton may no longer be with the team. and There was an expectation that Giannis may have been wavering as far as his commitment to the team. So it was a belief that Adrian Griffin could in the future be a part of a rebuilding effort. Uh, I believe, you know, he was hired before they acquired uh, Dame Lillard. So, the roster, the expected roster was going to be different. You know, Adrian Griffin was supposed to be part of a rebuilding effort. That's not the case. Uh, Chris Milton re resigned. Uh, they acquired Dame Lillard. Giannis has reaffirmed his commitment to this team. So the expectations changed, and I understand that. But with a 30-13 and 13 record, I thought that Adrian Griffin did enough to be able to keep his job. Now, the biggest criticism of Adrian Griffin was that the team just didn't look the same, right? The Bucks just didn't look the same as they had in years past, especially on the defensive end. I've maintained... And the brother 78 Sports T, shout out to him. Please subscribe to his channel. We've maintained that if you watch the Bucks, it really wasn't the coaching. Yeah, you, you can make some criticisms of some of the things that Adrian Griffin did as far as a coach. Some things, some of the offensive schemes were predictable. Um, I thought that, you know, Giannis should be playing more off the ball, right? Uh, for instance, however, the defense, that was effort. That was the team effort. The effort on defense for this team is poor. And you couple that with the fact that in the backcourt, you have guys who are not known as defenders. Okay? Dame was never known, even in his younger years, as a defender. Malik Beasley, if you watch him play, he's not a great defender. Okay? Uh, none of these guys are good defenders. Also, the Bucks are one of the oldest teams in the NBA. If you watch the Bucks, you'll see that uh, they have some old guys. Brooke Lopez, I mean, he's balling, but Brooke Lopez is like 36 going on 37 years old, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, uh, Giannis is still in his prime, but uh, a lot of these guys are not having the same years. Uh, Pat Connaughton does not like the same Pat Connaughton from three years ago when they won the title. Um, Dane looks like he's slowing down more. He's still a very impactful scorer, but man, is he a liability on defense. Uh, Bobby Portis doesn't look the same. He's not having the same impact. Uh, and this team desperately misses Drew Holiday. They do. Uh, I don't believe that Drew Holiday is a superstar, but what he provided for the team 
the, the key defensive stops down the stretch. Uh, and at times, even though he can be a little bit inconsistent offensively, even though his overall numbers look like he's a great shooter, but um, there are times when Drew Holiday will give you an unexpected 35, 40-point game. There are times when Drew Holiday, on top of the defense, will give you a 27-point, uh, four-rebound, uh, you know, seven, eight-assist performance. You know? So, uh, they desperately missed that. Yeah, they missed that. Um, a lot of these guys, you know, and, and that's one of the problems with the Bucks. They tend to struggle against younger athletic players. And <clears throat> that's why they barely beat the Pistons. That's why they have problems with the Pacers, because of the pace. That's why they have problems last night with Portland. Why? Because they got younger players. who are going. If you look at the Bucks, the biggest problem they've had all year is containing younger perimeter players. That's the biggest problem they've had. That's why the guys always have these these career games against the Bucks or season best numbers against the Bucks. The Bucks suck on that end of the court. That has nothing to do with Adrian Griffin. And now that they've hired Doc Rivers, we're seeing right now, once again, and this is no knock on Doc Rivers because they're you know he did play the Denver Nuggets. They're the defending world champions. People can't forget that. But they're on too. But it has nothing to do with Doc. Doc is a, a superior coach, in my opinion, to Adrian Griffin. And Doc's going to get these guys playing better eventually. But there's only so much Doc can do when you lack some, some personnel. It's not, it's not Doc Rivers' fault. It wasn't Adrian Griffin's fault. It's the roster. It's the players. That's, the, that's what I've been trying to get through to people. Who keep one? Who kept one to throw Adrian Griffin on the bus? On the bus, excuse me. It's the Bucks. They're not the same team. And uh, shout to uh, Pastor, uh, 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 what is it, Pastor, uh, 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 Pastor Rufus. Um, he made a good point. People got to understand that Adrian Griffin was put in a messed up situation. Um, Mike Budenholzer was was fired. Okay, and I and from what I can understand, some of the players didn't like that. Okay, but that was something decided by the player. Uh, excuse me, by the front office. Uh, they traded away. Drew Holiday before he got there, Adrian Griffin. These were things that hurt the team. And then people had the expectations for Adrian Griffin Adrian Griffin to lead a team that was drastically different from last year to a title. So I think he did a damn good job. Thirty and thirteen, probably on pace to win fifty seven games. But he gets fired. So, you know, it is what it is, man. Uh, at the end of the day, I think that the Bucks need to make some trades. And, um, you know, I think they need to get some, a guy like Alex Caruso. Or they need to get some defenders. They need to get some younger players on this team. Uh, improve the, especially improve, improve the perimeter defense. But the Bucks, even when Drew Holiday was there, the Bucks have always had problems Guarding the three, if you watch them, they, they've always had problems guarding the three. That's why Boston gives them so much problems. Uh, so they've never been the best perimeter defensive team. Uh, they've always been a strong post defensive team, stopping players from penetrating the, to the to the uh, basket. But even that's starting to fade and falter because Giannis is playing more away from the basket than before. And Drew is, and uh, excuse me, Brooke Lopez is getting older. So <clears throat> those are my thoughts, at least. And the be- the bench is weak. So you know, what I'm saying those are my thoughts. Uh, you know, the bench isn't what it once once was. So those are my thoughts of the Bucks right now. Tell me what you guys think. <laughs>